Good morning. Welcome. We're going to get started in about two minutes, make sure everyone has this space to join. Um, and thank you for joining our webinar, Leading Change in Education, How Responsive Leadership and Teamwork Transform Schools. We'll introduce ourselves in just a moment. And thanks for saying good morning in the chat. Hope everyone's having a great day and there's nice weather wherever you are. All right, well, while we're still waiting for, for some attendees to join, we can go ahead and introduce ourselves as um, education elements. So on the next slide, you'll see our mantra, schools grow when people grow. So if you're unfamiliar with the Ed Elements team, uh, we are a passionate organization where we've had 13 years of ex experience and we help schools and districts really bring their ideas to life. We're a national team of roughly 50 consultants and partners working in 48 states, again, for the past 13 years, which means that we've got the content expertise and the connections and we can leverage for your work, but also a deep enough bench to staff the right folks for a project if you're interested. I'm going to pass it over to Anna and my incredible teammate, Anna, and she can go ahead and introduce herself. Thanks, Bree. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Rizzo. I'm one of the design principals at Education Elements. I live in Northern Virginia, about 30 minutes outside of Washington, D.C., and I am a former high school counselor. Um, most of my projects at Ed Elements, I work with districts on some organizational strategy. Um, I'm really invested in helping them build some strong systems to achieve their educational initiatives. And I'm fortunate to continue to be an advocate for not just student success, but educator success. So thank you for being here and looking forward to hearing from all of you. Thanks, Anna. My name is Bree. I'm coming to you live from the sunny Belmar Beach, New Jersey this morning. Um, and prior to being at Ed Elements, I was a third grade teacher as well as a fourth grade teacher and professional development coach in a district that I worked in in New Jersey. So I'm really passionate about working with districts at Ed Elements while working at Ed Elements on their instructional and responsive initiatives. The responsive leadership work that our company provides is definitely my favorite of all of the solutions that we offer. And I'm really excited to talk more about the work we've done specifically in Charleston this school year. I'm going to pass it over to Gail. Hi, good morning. My name is Gail Morris, and I am um, very happy to be joining you as a part of this team and um, this webinar today. Um, and my previous roles, um, I am currently serving as um, Director of Leadership Pipeline and also uh, for Educator Effectiveness um, in our district. And um, prior to this, I was a teacher in middle school and then an assistant principal for many years and then a principal. Um, and I stepped away from that role and came into the uh, district role uh, to work in the leadership pipeline to be able to provide opportunities for our growing leaders. So whether they're aspiring leaders or whether they're current leaders that are looking to grow their craft um, and step into new roles or just to be a, a better leader. Um, so that is the role that I serve in this district and how I got involved with um, what we're going to talk about a little bit more today. Great. Thanks, Gail. Um, so in the chat, if you don't mind, we would love it if everyone would share their role um, and what district or school organization you are from, along with what do you value most about your workplace environment? Uh, something that we want to model for you and see that we really uh, believe in the power of human connection here at Education Elements. I can say for me, um, especially knowing that uh, Bree and I, when we are not traveling out to the school districts that we partner with, uh, we work at home. And everybody at Education Elements is a former educator, and it can be really easy to miss the hustle and bustle of school environments, the collaboration with students and our colleagues. I know as a former counselor, I had students in my office all day long, but something that I really value about um, the environment at Education Elements is 
our ability to really intentionally create those spaces for connection, uh, not just with our colleagues, but also with our external partnerships. Um, and Gail is a big part of that. And we're so thrilled that she could be here with us today. Great, welcome Hilda. Mariah, great. So keep those responses coming in um, and be sure to share what you value most about your workplace environment. On this slide, we're gonna show just some of the things that we want to highlight in our time today. Um, in this first bullet, we know that school and district leaders are facing heightened scrutiny in these days on how they choose and prioritize their educational initiatives. So we want to spend a little bit of time hearing from Gail on the core principles that have guided Charleston County School District's decision to invest in their leaders. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the impact of leadership and school culture. Uh, we wanna understand the importance and value of our responsive leadership approach in education. And we hope to discover ways to change the work that happens in your teams, your schools and your districts and organizations. Take a couple moments to continue looking through the chat and see who's here. Bringing groups together internally and between institutions. We love that, Jacqueline. I see collaborative nature and supports. Providing opportunities for teachers and our staff to share their strengths. Great, so a lot about, uh, similar to me, I'm seeing a lot about the opportunity to collaborate with your peers, also to invest in your staff and helping them grow. I'm seeing as some common themes here today. So to start, uh, we want to uh, start with our spark. So we use the CPAD method here kind of as a framework to introduce uh, new concepts and habits. And so today we're gonna start with our initial thinking and our inspiration as our spark. So we would love to hear from you now before we jump in. Who do you think contributes to the climate and culture of your school? Go ahead and add your responses into the chat. We see principal and school leadership teams. Everyone, okay, shared ownership, everybody who walks through the door. I see everyone, but the principal or the leader is setting the tone for that. Students. Great, lots of different answers. So now I would love to hear from you, how do all of these people contribute? So how do those leaders set the tone? How does everybody contribute when they walk in the door? The district leaders setting the tone. So different types of leaders have different roles in how they set that climate and culture. Creating shared norms, integrity, aligning with your direction, your values, your vision, your mission. Great, thanks everyone. So we know that we've already started by uh, putting you all to work and asking you to contribute to this webinar and we want you to keep on doing that. Um, so something we wanna talk about here is we know over the past several years, we have seen um, a lot of changes in the workforce and that's not just specific to education, uh, but even in other industries as well. And so a lot of people, some of that was exacerbated by the pandemic, but we're seeing a lot of people um, leaving their jobs, thinking about leaving their jobs, and we want to know more about why that is. So something that we found interesting is that when employers or organizations are asked about why do you think your staff are, le are leaving, uh, generally we see things like compensation being cited, um, maybe that work-life balance or you know, mental and physical health, and all of those things are important. But when, in, when the employers themselves are being asked why they have made the decision to leave, the top three factors that we see are um, they don't feel valued by their organizations, 
um, or their managers, they don't feel a sense of belonging at work. And so knowing that as school and district leaders, compensation is something that while important, it's not something that you may have direct control over. But in terms of the culture and climate at your schools, of how your staff feel, whether or not they feel invested in, uh, they feel valued in their work, that is something that school and district leaders have direct control over. Um, we saw a lot in the chat that while there is shared ownership by everybody in a school organization in creating that culture, it is really those leaders, whether that's at the building or the district uh, level, that are going to be setting that tone. And so we want to spend a little bit more time today kind of talking about what are the ways that you have control over that and how can you can contribute to a positive and innovative school, school culture at your schools. So in the chat, again, I um, want to hear from everybody. Do you know how leaders feel and what they experience on the day-to-day -day and how? See a lot by leaders leading by example. We're going to talk quite a bit about how leaders can model some of these practices that we'll be talking about today. Yeah, and while you guys are typing in the chat, this is such an interesting question that Anna, Gail, and I have asked um, the cohort of eight assistant principals as well as aspiring leaders in Charleston County that we'll get into. You'll learn more about in just a moment, but this question is always so eye-opening to so many different people because sometimes you might just know how someone's feeling, obviously, by their body language. It could be a conversation that you're having, in a um, whether it's a meeting or a check-in. It could be just noticing that maybe someone's not making eye contact. So it's it, really interesting to see, like, how do you know how others, it could be leaders, it could be just your the members in your school community, how are they feeling? And if you don't know, we'd love to hear that as well. Like maybe you really have no idea how someone might be feeling on a day-to-day. -day. Yeah. And Brian, I feel like there you go, right? How, you know, other than by direct conversation, it's kind of hard to tap in. So appreciate that response. Yeah, and I think a great point here is that when we're talking about building leaders setting the tone in school uh, in school culture in their schools, um, they need to know how everybody is showing up in that moment first, right, in order to create that change. Um, and sometimes when we pause and we think about it, we realize we may not really know how people are feeling. Yeah, feeling overwhelmed with the amount of hats you have to wear, Brian, absolutely agree. That's something we see often and something we want to talk about here as well. Heather, the sh the safe space to share. Yep, that is also um, something that was very became very apparent during our cohort work that we did with Charleston, um, putting leaders in the same uh, place and making sure that they feel safe enough to share all the things that they're experiencing. Alrighty, so we're going to move into the expand section of our webinar, and we're going to introduce the foundational six. And this actually is such a great segue and thinking specifically, Heather, your your comment in the chat about how maybe you 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 are aware that your leaders are sharing that they feel overwhelmed because it's a safe enough place in your school community to share that that feeling. Um, so in the foundational six, right, we want you to encourage we encourage you to think about and really imagine um, a, a space that everyone has a place to grow where there's a comfortable enough, safe enough to try mindset where you feel comfortable and pushing yourself and, and really pushing those around you out of your comfort zone. Maybe you're imagining where you even surprise yourself with your accomplishments. And this is really the, the foundation of our, of our six here. So the, the competencies here are know yourself, nurture trust, cultivate curiosity, communicate constantly, listen deeply, and decide deliberately. So Gail in just a moment is going to talk through how this, how these six competencies were brought to life through our work in Charleston County this school year. But we really want to just share too how at, at, at Education Elements, we've identified these six foundational competencies, and they are the foundation of our responsive leadership work, and they really help demonstrate what it means to be an innovative and transformative leader. So we're going to talk more about these 
throughout the rest of the webinar, but I'll pass it over to Gail where she can talk specifically about how we brought them to life um, at Charleston County this school year. Okay, so um, and actually, we we started this last year. I worked with um, a different group, and um, and Anna and Bree, we worked together this year to develop that and really hone in on um, specifically what we wanted to see. Um, and last year, it started because um, as we've already talked about creating that climate and culture, um, and having the 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 focus put on um, supporting our leaders and making sure we invested in those leaders to have the skills and have some of the um, the day to day things that they're doing, but zoom out a little bit and see how can we improve on those skills? How can we improve on those strategies? And, um, and not just the nuances of what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis as a an assistant principal or a principal, which is where we started last year. And I'll talk a little bit in a minute about where we expanded into, but we did start with our, our building level leaders last year and um, and had them to, to start with that group so that they could develop a better way of, um, of doing meetings, conducting meetings, holding meetings, um, getting better outcomes from those meetings so that they could have engagement throughout the meeting, but but also they could be productive um, and have more productivity from uh, those folks that they were they were um, in the meeting with. Uh, so th that's something, a very tangible um, example of just one. But that was one um, thing that resonated with me. I actually sat through the cohort both years, but last year as a participant, this year more of a facilitator. And, um, and last year in that, that was one of the places that I grew the most was um, to how to engage my audience and make sure that they were feeling a, a piece and a part of, and also being a contributor to what we were trying to do as an outcome. So um, we, with this started with conversations centered around um, with our our leaders in our district level um, and our associate superintendents is what we have them as their label here and their supervisors over the principals and they um, were interested in something that was dealing with interpersonal skills and growing the interpersonal skills so we built this um, and collaboratively um, with Ed elements and um, and developed a a systematic way to um, to tackle all of those different things that Bria just talked about those six those foundational six and um and it was these are just some little samples of pictures of the different things that happened throughout the year this year we started so i i said that we last year we started as principals and ap's and this year we went to our, um some more um, coaches we still put it out to any ap's that wanted to still continue so we started with coaches which you're going to see on that picture on the left there and it was a smaller group that we started with um, our APs there, and then we bled out into um, having coaches. So that that crew on the left doubled, and we had um, a group that they were um, tapping from their own buildings to come in because the whole purpose of this is creating a sustainable um, idea that we can then nurture and help grow and don't just one and done hit something and then hope that it transforms into um, other walks of life. So we wanted to, to extend that down um, into our buildings a little bit deeper uh, because we know those coaches are direct impacts um, within the classrooms and getting in those classrooms and helping to see the helping with the teachers as well. Um, so um, we wanted to invest. That's really the biggest part of this, of how it got started, was investing in our, our leaders. And those could be aspiring leaders. Those could be current leaders. Um, and they could be even teachers that are leading um, within their realm of teaching. So they may never want to be a leader as far as an assistant principal or principal or district level leadership. They may want to hone in on their skills and their craft as being a leader of teachers um, and their colleagues. Yeah, thanks, Gail. Um, a couple of comments just to that is one, really the decision to include um, some of those coaches and those aspiring leaders we really felt was such a powerful move. Um, obviously, leadership development and investment isn't something that we see happening across all school districts and something that we really hope to emphasize the importance of here today. Uh, but I also think it had this um, side effect of really creating empathy amongst our aspiring leaders and really hearing some of the conversations and understanding all of the things top of mind that school and district leaders have to deal with. Um, I'm sure that everybody here today can resonate with this, but I know even in my former role as a school counselor, 
a lot of my work with administration was really focused on helping keep things off of teacher plates. So that way they could narrow in and focus on instruction and doing the best that they could for their students. And as a result, there's a lot of things that are constantly going on in the background that they're just not aware of, and that's intentional. Um, but we heard from so many of those aspiring leaders and those coaches that they were really it gave them such a deeper perspective of what that job signing up to be a building or a school or district leader really entails, knowing that all of the things that they just typically aren't exposed to in their day to day. And I think that that side effect of creating that empathy was a really powerful one and something that was very meaningful for all of our session participants. Um, something else that I'd like to say is that you can see the series of sessions here that we have um, with the pictures going along for what we did in Charleston. That Responsive Leadership Institute is a two-day um, solution that we offer to a lot of districts. We help give um, some tactical skills like a tactical agenda item that Gail mentioned and some other direct resources that we can turnkey and give to session participants. But for those workshops, those were really uh, tailored and designed to be based off of what we heard from session participants and what was top of mind for them. So at the end of each session, we asked, going into the spring, what is, you know, what is going to be your biggest concern as a leader? As you can see for the quarter two one, um, it was coaching teachers, knowing that that is about the time that evaluations were coming up and observations and so forth. So we were able to really create each session based upon what we heard from our cohort participants on what was top of mind, what they were most interested in, and then gave them some resources um, and things that they could take back to their schools and teams. Bree, anything else to add or Gail, anything that I missed or something else that we wanna talk about in the journey? Oh, well, I I think the another piece of that that just kind of sparked a, something else in my brain was w this group has now formed, it's not just a cohort, it's a group of colleagues that they are now, yes, friendships that are professional friendships, but they are also, they have a network that is a network within a network that they could have reached out to prior to, but they probably wouldn't have because they may not have known who that person was or what they, uh, what their journey was to get there or, um, any anything about them or their skill sets and um and some of that came out in our sessions because of being able to be vulnerable and being able to talk about real situations and things that were happening um so that group now while they are lighthearted and have fun they also are um are ones that they can have a resource library that they can now have a rolodex of of sorts for those of you that um know what a Rolodex is, um, but uh, they can have that that ability to be able to go and, and access different folks uh, within our district that they still had access to, but our district is so large. Um, and I don't even think I said that we're in, in Charleston County, um, we're well over uh, quite a few students here. We have um, over 5,000 teachers and we're, we're a very vast, very long district because we're coastal. So we're in Charleston, South Carolina, um, and we range a very, very large, long, um, it, by by square mileage, it may, may be very similar to others, but because it's coastal, it's um, from one end to the other. It's a very different look between buildings as well. So we have a, a unique perspective of rural versus inner city um, and and just very community driven schools. Um, so we have a very unique perspective when it comes to coming together because um, what one school or five schools may have a struggle with may be totally opposite just five minutes down the road. So um, we have that ability to pull these folks together and be in a common space to talk about similarities of things that they're seeing um, and very big differences, but they can grow from one another and you tap each other for resources. I would just like to quickly add on to that. And I know they, it kind of relates to our metrics that I'll pass right back over to you, Gail, but it was so interesting to see the different um, length of experience within the room as well across the cohort members, similar to what Gail just mentioned, so many differences in uh, where their school was located in CCSD, but also whether you've been an assistant principal for um, eight years or plus, or maybe you just, this is your first year being an assistant principal, or you became a, an, an assistant principal during COVID and you, you actually didn't receive the training that 
maybe your your colleagues did if you had joined in that you know started in that role prior to the pandemic happening um and also we had once we opened it up to aspiring leaders and nominating someone to join in on this experience with you we had i want to say three teacher of the year winners in the room um and so many other uh so many other, uh, so many different levels of experience in the cohort, which was so inspiring and also great to to have in thoughtful and engaging conversations about, you know, again, the foundation of those six competencies, whether it was how are you communicating constantly or consistently with your with your staff or even amongst peers and if you're at the teacher level. But uh, the feedback we received is great. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, but want to just name to that the uh, the difference in experience was something that was was um, not intentionally planned. Uh, I think sometimes when we get into work, we want to have the cohort be okay. Uh, really like you know individuals that have very similar experiences, and I think that we were able to create such a special group of uh, a, a special cohort filled with so many vast experiences, and it it really led to uh, well one the creation of the resource bank, but also those engaging conversations. So, Gail, I'll I'll pass it back over to you, and you can talk more about these impact metrics. Yes, and I do want to go there, but um, you you also chimed me in with something else. So, um, and I saw some of you and where you are currently um, in your roles. So, um, many of you have probably had the opportunity or have been um, asked to have the opportunity to create professional development for your folks. And um, sitting in the whatever role I've sat in, it doesn't really matter. It's really difficult to get a professional development opportunity that is a good for everyone, where everybody seems to grow from and everybody seems thrilled to be there and um, and uh, seems to have an opportunity for learning something. Um, I also am in charge of um, the assistant principal meetings on a monthly basis in Charleston County. And um, I'll find myself sometimes speaking to where you have to you have to talk about some of the basics um, because some of those folks that are newer have to have that. But those veterans that have been sitting there for a long time don't want to hear it again. They've heard it many times. And this is definitely not that. Um, so that was never something that we heard. And and Bree was just talking about the expansion of of who all was in the room um, from novice to veteran and all different walks of leadership roles. And every single one of them had a contributing um, part to it. We needed all of them to make it successful and all of their expertise and, and background experiences to make it successful. And they all walked away. And I, I am very confident in saying all. Um, they all walked away with a feeling that um, this was beneficial to me. It was not a waste of my time. It was something that was invested in me. And I know that I grew and I learned, and not only did I learn something, I also took back some tangible work products that I can now use immediately um, and share with others. So that, and I'm sorry, that wasn't the impact metrics, but that was definitely something that came to my, my head. So moving into the impact me metrics. So we did this last year and then we revisited it again this year. So we're talking specifically about this year. So in October, we came and um, collaboratively developed these metrics. This was not a, okay, here's what we think that you need to do based on X, Y, Z, whatever that X, Y, Z might be. Um, this was a, what, what data do I have that says what we are in need of and what can be delivered here to be able to make sure that it's relevant and um, going to help to support what we were just talking about of whoever our audience might be. So we developed these um, collaboratively. We co-created these um, different metrics to be able to make sure that we had an accountability measure for ourselves and um, also to make sure that we were staying on track with what, what it was that we were trying to achieve and making sure that we had something as a touch point to go back to and, um, and re visit, which is something that they did every single time was to revisit where are we with this? What's the impact from this? What is the response from this? What is the um, the feedback from our, our group um, in regards to these different metrics? Um, and we wanted to make sure that we were centered. So we, we wanted to stay centered on that cycle of growth and, and um, make sure that we had the impact was actually doing what we had intended it to do from the jump and that we were having that opportunity for our um, our 
people that we were investing in to have this true growth opportunity for them so that they could expand um, on what they were learning what they needed to learn, what they wanted to learn, what they had given feedback as to what they needed and wanted to learn. Um, so we these these were all put in place intentionally and with thought and with some data. Anything else that I left out of there? Okay. All right. So um, then we move into a different set of of impacts uh, of um, impact metrics. Um, so these were the ones that held us accountable uh, because, and, and, and by us, I am reflective in that, even though I wasn't delivering the instruction, um, I was the one that was helping to support Bree and Anna to make sure we were going in the right direction on our end of what our, our folks that were coming to these sessions needed. Um, and they were the ones that delivered. And so their, their impact metrics for um, accountability was to make sure that they were satisfied. They got a satisfactory um, or very satisfactory on their feedback each time. So that was something we were looking for. We celebrated each time because um, it was very easy to achieve that, um, but not... Um, it was not, um, that doesn't, that's not saying that it was super easy to get there. It was a lot of planning and a lot of thought went into it to in, ensure that not only did they deliver things that were, um, were able to be taken and used because that's typically the feedback that I'll receive is this is not something that I can use. It's not something that I can, I can take back and, um, and turn key what, what Anna was saying earlier. So that is a lot of times the feedback that I'll receive. So that we, we wanted, wanted that, but we also wanted them to have a, a growth opportunity where they could reflect, um, which was another big part of it. So from session to session where we were in person, um, we came back and they would touch on things from previous work. So it wasn't just about new learning and putting some new things in place and give me, give me, give me all these different resources. It was how did that work? What did you do? How are we going to go into that next group of um, of learning skills and um, how can we build on that? And so those um those growth opportunities that came um, were were relevant for this group of, of people because they were able to see what am I doing? Where am I going? Where's the, where's this roadmap take, taking me? And am I going to have an outcome that's actually going to be something that I can reflect on that there was an opportunity for me to be able to grow as a leader and, um, and put into practice? So these are thoughts and ways in which they're not just tangible work products. They are also how, how do you do those things and, and taking time to self-reflect on that and um, ensuring that we provided them the space and the time to be able to do that was also very important. While it was really good to develop uh, relationships and have some um, fun activities, which I always, I always challenged Brie and Anna the, to make sure that we did some, some fun activities because as um assistant principals and principals and coaches and teachers that came in this one um, tend to do, we, we are um, a lot of times competitive. So that competitive is, is a very strong um, driver. A lot of times that is a positive that can help when, when, uh, when somebody's doing something, you want to just step in and, and help or do a little bit more or um, make sure that you're keeping up with, because we are challenged and tasked with test scores and looking at and comparing different groups of people and students and all of that. So that's in our day-to-day -day grind that we are, are faced with. So having building in that fun factor was also a very big piece of developing the relationships here. So um, this one was a cr creating expanded solutions and um, collaborating together to um, make sure that we were constantly evolving. And you can't set the tone for in October for what's going to be the outcome in March, because it's going to transform over time. It's going to evolve. It's going to say, we're going to say, um, we reflect and say, this is something that was really uh, meaningful to them. They were very engaged in this. What What's more that we could do in that area? Because that was obviously an impact um, piece that they needed a little bit more of, or maybe we just need to revisit it to make sure that we are um, circling back and, and addressing it. Um, we even had one little snafu that was coming into play of, um, of something that we revised. And it was having everybody share different pieces um, with each other. And um, there was really in um 
considered conversation around that that was very intentional about how can we be different about what we're asking to make sure that they get the most out of what we're asking them to give. Um, so th there's always reflection on that we're asking of our participants, but we're also doing the reflection ourselves to ensure that those impact metrics are constantly being re revisited and expanded upon so that we can get the most out of the sessions. Um, yeah, I'd like to add something. Yep. You just named it, but um, in iterating on the original idea of creating this resource bank, um, you know, we we got to the point where we finally met the need of and the the purpose behind why we were creating it in the first place. And I want to just say, and it goes, you know, it it was such an authentic activity once we got to where we needed to be. Um, and it wasn't like a to do after a workshop, which I think we've all basically been tasked with yeah. once, you know, in our experience, this was something that, you know, and you'll see this a little bit later in the webinar, we at Ed Elements always come tasked with resources that are maybe this is something you can try tomorrow or next week or in 30 days. But we always have that framing of like, hey, like our goal is you can try something tomorrow and we won't push people to do it. It just happens authentically because of the materials and the conversations and the resources they're, they're meeting and they're providing a solution to a problem that others are discussing in that safe psychological space. Mm -hmm. So in this resource bank, it was, oh, like I use this resource after Anna introduced it to me and I did it at the start of my faculty meeting. And, and then the, the participant will explain in that resource bank how teachers felt about it or how they're using check-ins during faculty meetings. So it's, again, just created and morphed into this innovative tool, um, which the original idea, of course, we wanted it to work, but it just morphed into something so much more authentic. And now we have a whole spreadsheet filled with like, hey, here's what I tried. It flopped. So do it differently um, <laughs> across CCSD. So wanted to just name that in that expanded solutions section. Um, and Gail, feel free to add on to that if you'd like to. Um, well, and the only other thing I was going to say about this is that um, every attendee that came, while there was a lot of collaboration and a lot of group work and a lot of discussions that we did have, each participant was individually, and, and Brie just kind of touched on this too, but each participant was asked to, um, to commit to um, a, a rule um, or a strategy that they were going to try, and they had to report back on that. So Brie had just talked about it in, in that um, where they were sharing different pieces and documents that they were they had come up with, they were supposed to commit. And that wasn't necessarily what they had to um, also share out. Um, it may be something totally unrelated to what they were asked to, to um, commit to, but having a commitment that's individualized is also a, a very big piece of this that I think was um, impactful um, because, again, they were learning different tools and strategies and skills. And we were having conversations around all that, but they also tied it back to what's happening in my own building right now that I can say, here's what I need to attach to, and here's what I need to reflect on, and here's what I need to come back and visit again and again and again um, on improvement. And um, and that looked like very different things across the room. Um, so it, it could be something as, as um, simple as wanting to um, improve on a meeting, like I had said earlier, um, to having a difficult conversation with teacher, a teacher or a different person um, within the building, to... Um, to coming up with ideas and new strategies for a big problem that's happening throughout the building um, that's much more global and, and involves quite a bit of, of stakeholders. So it, it was pretty expansive, but that was a very big piece of this is that there was a commitment to not only attending and being an active participant, but also trying out in my building, some of these things. And it, like Bree said, if it's a flop, it's a flop. That's okay. To reflect on having a flop, you can't learn unless you do have some of those um, challenges and, and things that don't necessarily work the way that you were intending them to work. So how can we improve upon that? And we have a safe space to be able to to try something else again, or to discuss why it didn't work and what are some things that I could do to improve on that. Okay, and then the um, this last impact metric was um, really the, that's this is the biggest part where I'm involved is to um, have 
better and equitable educator outcomes, but also st sustainability. I mentioned this earlier about creating an environment that's, that's sustainable, or not environment, creating a system that is going to be sustainable by training and teaching and learning, um, but also we're sharing that out with others. So when you see some practice that works, um, and maybe it's a practice that we learn from here, uh, as a as another person that's that's in that space. So if if I'm taking something back and trying it and it's working successfully, typically that will be borrowed, an idea that will be borrowed and will continue on. So we are trying to put these practices into place so that others may learn and then continue that journey of of training, obviously others, but also um, just these practices that can be those um, take backs and you can actually um, go ahead and try and um, and you can have your teams in your own building centered around those ideas once um, once they've been reviewed and um, and and you have a, a think tank that goes around those ideas and you can really grow from them. So really, that's the biggest piece is to have a growth opportunity, a growth model for our leaders so that they can come in and we we invest in them to say, we know you're doing a good job. We know you're you're trying everything every day, but here's some other tools, some things, some things always change. Things are always constantly changing. So how can we keep up with those changes? And these these ladies did a wonderful job of um, helping to keep up with some of those things that are happening in our buildings that some things will never change. Um, conversation, difficult conversations are never going to change from year to year to year, but how we can handle those and ideas and strategies that we can put into place for some of those things um, do adjust from time to time. Um, and then this is, so how do we do? So we did pretty well. And, and again, I say we, because um, this is my take back as well to um, be able to support what we've done um, and the outcomes that they were asked and hoped for were uh, met and exceeded. So uh, they, the participants were very happy with the outcomes. They were happy with what they received. They were happy with um, the takeaways. They were happy with the collaboration and the group effort. Um, I know that there was uh, a little bit of hesitancy when we went from APs to opening it to um, the, the next level, which was um, coaches and teachers in the building of, can we really authentically be ourselves and talk about some of those difficult things? And we were able to push through a lot of that. So um, there was not that resistance. And uh, I mean, you can see it from the feedback here that, that it was um, a really positive uh, impact. One of the best, I know it's in the next, uh, one of the next slides, but it was one of the best sessions that they've attended um, and best cohort they've ever been a part of. And I can attest to that. I have said the same things out of my own mouth from last year when I was an active participant in it. And it was one of the best um, professional development opportunities that I was provided um, because I, I say opportunity because it was not a required session, but it was, it was the best um growth opportunity that I could have to as a professional and um, and as an, an interactive member of a school community I could be a part of. Yeah, and just to add on to that, like, let's be honest in the sense of in that first day of the Institute, as you all know, it's it's kind of like unimaginable to think about being away from your building for an entire day and then knowing that the next day you're going to be away too. And I'm confident in saying that I would say by hour two, at least on the first day, we had the buy-in from everyone in that room of like, okay, you know what, I'm actually going to mark on my calendar right now when the remaining sessions are and make sure that I can prioritize being here. Um, and I'm sure you could see that, we're, you know, oh, general reflections from these this feedback here, but I think that's just worth saying that, um, of course, it's kind of like, oh, you know, it is, it, it was a opportunity and it was a volunteer, you know, if you can join, please do. Um, but it, it was, it was worth mentioning that after that, you know, the first morning it was like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm away from my building, but I'm, I'm super present in this space because I know this is going to help me be a stronger leader in my building. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And I'd like to add to that, um, actually, something that we heard from one of the more experienced uh, building leaders in the cohort, she shared that quote um, at the end here that says, I learned so much about myself personally and as a leader. At the end of this cohort, she shared with us that she was pretty hesitant to take this opportunity because she was experienced and also knowing that being out of her building for five days throughout the course of the year was a big ask. Um, and it's hard for building leaders to imagine prioritizing that when they don't know what they're signing up for. Uh, but at the end, you know, something that I know that we're all certainly proud of, she was so grateful for the opportunity. And I think that range of different experiences in the cohort ultimately just led to richer conversations, um, increased vulnerability. Um, and I do believe that everybody was able to take something away from uh, this experience and be able to apply that back at their schools and their teams. So we were really pleased with this. Um, as Gail said, there was a lot of hard work that went into it, but we wanted to make sure that we were really crafting these sessions based upon the feedback that we got and the things that were most relevant for the building leaders and for the coaches in the room. And um, and the, the the biggest thing I can do as a takeaway for for this is um, many of you you were asked at the very beginning about the climate and culture and the range of who um, is the biggest stakeholder in that ranges from different groups different depending on probably which school you're thinking of which um, environment you're considering um, and so the students versus the faculty, versus the principal, versus the district level. And the, the thought process with this was that if we can give tools and strategies for our building level leaders to be able to be responsive to their staff, their leadership team, and their stakeholders of students, community members, all of those folks that that feed into making a successful school, which is their team and their organization. It's not just, it's not, their team is not just the principal and the AP. Um, it, it is, everybody is on the team, the same team. And that's where the transformation happens is, uh, is, is if all of those different stakeholders are involved in it and they are being invited in to be a part of that. But in order to do that, some of our leaders need some support and some thought processes and just some think partners on how to do that and collaborate to be able to bring everybody in and create these organizations that are are really foundational in making our students grow. That is the ultimate um, the hope for everything is that all all of our students in our schools will grow and um, continue to improve and progress over time. And we we as a district wanted to invest in our leaders to give them some tools and strategies to be able to do that. So thank you for the time today and to be able to talk with you about that. Yeah. And Gail, something I want to add to that is that it's creating the intentional space for those conversations to happen, right? Um, bringing these people together. We knew each of, you know, we had several teachers of the year in the room. We had building leaders um, and a lot of different experience. And so these things that we were talking about, these resources we were giving them, it's not beyond any of the leaders. They have the necessary skills and expertise that they need to bring to their roles. But by creating this space for them to really reflect and think about that and giving additional resources um, led to some good conversations. Yeah, it did. Before we move into the practice section of our webinar, I want to just take a moment to pause. Um, if you have any questions or wonderings, feel free to add them to the chat. And, um, you know, we have about 12 minutes left of our webinar and we have tons of resources to share. So we'll be continuing to monitor the chat, but do want to just name, um, we'll take a minute here, just share any questions or wonderings that, you know, if you'd like us to address right now, we'd be more than happy to.
All right. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and drop those in, but we will go ahead and move on. Um, so continuing on with our CPAD framework, we're now going to practice. And so some of these, um, we're going to kind of just go over some resources. Again, all of this will be sent after the webinar. You'll receive a recording as well as access to these uh, presentation and any necessary links. Um, but here we want to talk a little bit about some of the ingredients for creating that positive, that innovative and strong uh, culture in your schools and teams. And so something we want to call attention to is here you will see, um, you know, the ingredient, maybe the tension that you're trying to solve for, we need more of this, and then as well as a few ways to add a dash of that ingredient. And it's specifically calling it a dash because something we say quite a bit at Education Elements is small shifts uh, lead to big change. We know as school and district leaders, it can feel overwhelming to address all of the things that you're responsible for. And I think I even saw that in the chat earlier today. Um, but many of your decisions are also very high impact, high stakes. And so trying to focus on everything can sometimes ultimately feel like you're not you're focusing on nothing. And so we want to emphasize this idea of there are very small and intentional shifts that you can make to hopefully achieve some of these things that you're looking for. Um, so as you look over these ingredients, we would love it if you don't mind dropping into the chat, which of these ingredients resonates most with you? Which tension do you feel that in particular at your role you hope to try solving for? So again, we will uh, share all of these resources afterwards. Um, but in the first one, and we've you've heard us talk about this quite a bit, is knowing yourself. Um, so as school leaders, it's really important that you also engage in some of those self-reflection activities. So that way you know how you are showing up for your staff, for your students. Um, and then there's always that intention as well as the perception, right? It's a lot easier for us to in control what our intention is, but perception is not always something that's within our control and we have to be really intentional about how we're showing up. Um, so here we have an article that talks about what are 11 questions that you can ask yourself as a leader to help you be more self-aware. Um, again, and during our cohort experience, I can think of one assistant principal in particular who some of these self-reflection activities he found to be really powerful. And he even mentioned that during responding to some situations back at his school, he would take a moment to think about how am I showing up into this situation? How is the teacher going to receive that? What are they going to, um, you know, what do they see that how I need to be responding? What are they looking for me? And what is going to achieve the best possible outcome? And for him, just taking some of that self-reflection moment was really powerful for him and knowing how he could show up in his teams as well. So we have thinking about um, ways to self-reflect. We also want to talk about uh, nurturing trust. So it's really important. We talk about psychological safety quite a bit. Um, we were able to build some of those vulnerable environments um, during our cohort experience. But how can you create a space where you have um, relationships with your staff that create a psychologically safe environment? So where people feel comfortable enough to ask questions, how can leaders model building trust and making mistakes? Um, something that Gail and Bree talked about earlier is we had an idea for a resource bank that was not, it didn't work out how we initially thought it was going to when we first introduced it. And so we wanted to make sure that we were modeling for this cohort responsive practices of, okay, we're taking your feedback. This wasn't the best iteration of this idea. So we're going to try again and just showing that as leaders, we know that everybody is looking to us, but we're human too, we make mistakes. And so creating that um, that shared trust in that environment where staff members can see that, they can also know that it's easier to come to you with a problem. I know as a building leader, you wanna know when a problem arises right away than somebody feeling afraid to share that, right? Because you need to have that partnership to solve for it. So what are some ways that you can nurture trust amongst your staff and within your teams? And then also we wanna talk a little bit about cultivating curiosity. Um, and this really kind of leans into that growth versus that fixed mindset. We know that that is something we encourage all of our students to have that growth mindset. We want them to build some of those critical thinking skills 
But in order to do that, we need to see that modeled by their teachers. Their teachers need to model that for their students. And then in turn, um, our building leaders and our school leaders need to model that for the staff as well. Uh, so here we kind of have a little assessment of what is your curiosity profile? So what are the ways that you can model curiosity just for yourself, um, but also for others to lean more into that growth mindset? Pass it over to Bree. Yeah, and again, we'll be sharing all of these links um, after the webinar. There's a ton to go through. And again, these are all opportunities or uh, experiences that you can try, whether it's reflecting to yourself. You could do it today if you want, most likely, you know, tomorrow. But this this one uh, is specific to the communicate effectively competency, thinking about how can you continue or really start to be intentional and, and create spaces where the communication is clear and compelling. And there's lots of different strategies. You're, you know, switching it up. And this article here from Inc.com goes into seven different ways. Um, speak like a leader, seven effective communication skills and how, how to bring those skills to life um, in, your, in your role as a leader. The next slide goes into... Um, an article that focuses on listening deeply, you know, just as important, it's so important to listen as well when you're in a conversation, not just speaking, but making sure that you're listening deeply and intently. Um, so making sure that you are a leader who's asking questions and you're listening to learn, not listening to respond. Um, and this article is great because it really just has different examples. There's a specific example of people coming into your office and you want to put your computer at an angle because you want to still do what you're doing on the computer, but you also want to respond to the person who's in your office. And, and again, it, um, we've all been there, right? So this is just a, a great article that focuses on the discipline of listening. And the last one here, our last competency, where we have a resource you can try tomorrow, focuses on decide deliberately. There's so many decisions that you have to make in general, not just in your in your professional life, but in your life um, on a day, in, in one day. Um, and we actually, this is my favorite activity or, you know, protocol that we, we use with, within this, uh, responsive leadership work that we, that we commit to. And it's definitely one that resonates most with, with the participants and in all the cohorts that I've worked with. Um, and it's learning how to use the decision matrix. Um, it's a, it's really just a strong protocol that makes you really think intently on what matters most and what's the urgency of the task that maybe you need to make a decision on. And also makes you self-reflect on, is this something I even like doing or can I really um, distribute this task to someone else? It, it's just a great, um, it's a great matrix that really thinks about four different possibilities on the type of decision that you're making. So we're almost at time and that's maybe why I'm talking a little fast here, but we did want to make sure that we were highlighting each of the resources. Um, and Anna, if we go to the next slide, I'll pass it back over to you. Um, just thinking about, we'll close it up here, thinking about the, the, the strong long-term effects of this work. Yeah, and so here you can kind of see our roadmap. Um, so when districts recognize the importance of and the impact of investing in their leaders, um, then they can learn those ways to apply and a model responsive leadership for their staff, for their teams, uh, which ultimately lends to creating that positive and strong school culture in their school environments where teachers can feel valued and energized in their work which we know ultimately leads to improved um, student outcomes. And so knowing that in a time when, again, there's high scrutiny on what educational initiatives you have, we do know that investing in leaders does have that impact on students, um, student outcomes, which is ultimately what we know school districts are held accountable for. So just talking a little bit about in terms of how we scale this work. Um, so in this first part here, continuing the work, we were actually very pleased to hear some of the cohort participants requested part two of a responsive leadership series. So they said, look, our learning doesn't stop here. This was so valuable. We want to continue this work. Um, and we also know that we have created that that cohort experience for them where they can network with each other. They will be reaching out, sharing resources and so forth. Um, we also know that we want to expand the work. So co each of the cohort participants identified and nominated a colleague uh, to, participate, to participate in next year's leadership. And then also thinking um, kind of on a higher level, but just building alignment with taking a systems approach um, 
to learning leadership development through individual and team learning to help um, ultimately the district realize a shared vision and drive equitable outcomes across the district. Uh, something that Education Elements also works on is the Art of Implementing Well framework. We know that schools have different initiatives that they, schools and districts have different initiatives that they need to introduce and being really intentional about how they do that, looking at a systems approach um, is also something that we want to start conversations on. So with that, I am going to skip over this, but we do want you to think about what are some key takeaways? What would you like for your teams um, to achieve? And what are some of those small shifts that you can try making to help them do that? Um, but ultimately, again, this was just kind of our core centering belief around this work is that we believe that if we develop responsive leaders within the context of and alongside their teams and organizations, we can help transform how schools, how districts, um, you know, different organizations and learn into learning organizations where that that growth mindset, that curiosity is modeled from the top down. Yeah, thanks, Anna. And if you're interested in any of the other type of solutions that we provide here at Education Elements, this slide goes into more detail, whether it's instruction focused or leadership focused. Um, and slide the next slide goes into our upcoming webinar, which is happening next week, uh, Unifying a Divided Community Strategies for Community Engagement. Also wanted to name all of the webinars that we've done throughout the spring season focused around um, strategies for nav navigating K-12 challenges with fresh momentum. Even though these webinars have already passed, they are all housed on our YouTube channel. So if, you know, we encourage you to continue joining these webinars. You can scan that QR code right there and it will take you right to the landing page to sign up for some more upcoming webinars. We included um, the Ed Elements email addresses here on this slide. If you'd like to stay on a chat or, or ask a question, we will be here. Um, or you'd like to send us an email instead, feel free to do that. Want to just take a moment to deeply and you know send so much gratitude to you, Gail. Can't, can't share enough how much we appreciate you joining us and really talking about the excellent work that you, you supported us with and bringing to life in Charleston this school year. Thank you. It was great to be here and be able to be a part of this. And this work is, I'm very passionate about it. And it's, um, it's, it's been a very good reflection um, piece that we've had that is, has been valuable in our district. Yeah, thank you so much, Gail. And thank you everyone for joining. Um, we're always here. If you have questions, again, feel free to stay on. If not, you can hop on out of here. We know you have probably very busy uh, mornings or afternoons to get back to. Um, and we hope to see you at some more webinars coming uh, later this month. Thanks, everyone. All right, uh, we'll go ahead. Thanks, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thanks.